Welcome to Church of the Incarnation and welcome to Easter Eve. Normally, this is the night when we celebrate the great vigil of Easter, the most beautiful and the most complicated liturgy in our prayer book. The service begins outside on the sidewalk with lighting a fire and involves a procession with this paschal candle which represents the light of Christ. We enter the church in darkness, so everyone has a handheld candle like this one. The Easter Vigil includes stories of God's saving acts in scripture, the sprinkling of holy water, the ringing of bells, and a baptism or two. In fact, this night is traditionally the best time for baptism because it marks the transition from the death of Good Friday to the resurrection of Easter. Many people think Easter doesn't come until Sunday, when in fact, it comes Saturday night. Throughout the season of Lent, we have refrained from saying or singing Alleluia, but on Easter Eve, our Alleluia's return with the acclamation that Christ has risen. This year, we cannot celebrate the Easter Vigil in its entirety, and we have to postpone the baptism that we had planned. But we can still engage in key parts of the service and mark this most holy night that includes both darkness and light. There is a mix of solemnity and joy, of pain and consolation, which we know is true to human experience and true to life with God. Richard Rodriguez, a Catholic journalist, spoke to this idea at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. He said that when it comes to Holy Week, Catholics tend to focus on Good Friday, and most Protestants want to hurry up until we get to Easter Sunday. But Episcopalians are a Holy Saturday people. They can dwell in that liminal, in-between place. We don't hear of the events that happen between the burial of the body of Jesus and the late, on the late afternoon of Good Friday and the visit of the women to the tomb early Sunday morning. The Gospels are silent about that. And it is in this silence that our worship tonight fits. So now, I'm going to chant an ancient Easter proclamation. It's called the Exalted, and it's always sung by a clergy person at the Easter Vigil next to the Paschal Candle, which contains a twofold symbolism. I mentioned earlier that the candle represents the light of Christ. It also represents the pillar of fire that went before the Israelites during their flight from Egypt. The word Paschal connects Easter to the Passover, recognizing Jesus as the true Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The tone of the exalted is very much one of joy at having received so great a gift is our redemption and eternal life. Rejoice now, heavenly host and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all the round earth, bright with the glorious splendor. For darkness has been vanquished 
by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere. With our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who had the feast of the Passover, paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Tonight, we occupy both sides of the resurrection moment. The moment when Jesus' body is filled with the breath of life before he even exits the tomb. While we are not privy to the details of that experience, I invite you to imagine it. Close your eyes and imagine yourself in the tomb with Jesus. Before the stone rolls away, before the light streams in, Jesus sits up in the darkness, and you are seated next to him. The two of you remain there in silence, simply breathing. 
Are you ready for this? Jesus asks. I think so, you say. Living a resurrected life is not easy. I know. You have to feed my sheep, love the unlovable, and speak truth to power. I know. You will be broken, like me. I know. Resurrected life will break you. But for that very reason, it will also make you whole. For I am with you in this. And you will be bringing my presence more fully into the world. So are you sure you are ready? Yes, you say resolutely. Yes, I am ready. Alleluia, whispers Jesus. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight for this time of worship and reflection. To quote the late Bishop Barbara Harris, I send you Easter grace in a good Friday world. In the name of the one who died that we might live and lives that we might never die. For those of you continuing your observance of Easter Eve with us, I invite you to head over to Zoom at 7 p.m. The Reverend Rick Pike will be leading worship from Western Pennsylvania and will have Incarnation Choir member Matt Curran joining as well. You can find Zoom access information in yesterday's eMinder 
and I will see you there.